so you are competing against a 100 uh, 200 product category wise and it is a huge competition that we like so you need to be very aggressive when you enter the market your pricing needs to be very right you know study it so that you know that what you are entering into and what you are actually uh, going to be um, selling at you need to be very innovative um, what happens is that uh, our understanding of the the brand building process you know mm-hmm. is not that you do the most traditional way of branding or you do like you know you people say okay okay maine i i put up a i put up a stand i put up something of that sort you know it it doesn't it it's not as simple as it um, as it can be yeah. you need to you need to be very innovative you need to catch the consumers eye um, in terms of trying to sell your product hi jagar good afternoon how are you hi good afternoon davel how are you very well very well How is everything at home? All well, all well. Had a very pleasant weekend. So back, back to the Monday hustle. Nice. Really appreciate your time joining in on a on a you know Monday afternoon. Thank you so much for this. Thank you, thank you. It's always a pleasure. Always a pleasure talking to you. Awesome. Hi viewers. Good afternoon. Uh, welcome to the new episode of Sustainable Future Food Stop. Today we have with us uh, Jigar Shah from Bispark Ventures India. Jigar is the founder of SBA Business Consultants, Biz Spark Ventures, and Biz Spark Investments. Having a spread of business and a collective fifteen years of experience in various fields, he runs a successful line of businesses. So, uh, Jigar, uh, a personal question first of all. So, you know, what made you come into FMCG and you know leaving the banking and uh, finance uh, business aside? so i um, started with uh, uh, with the banking industry you know i was into um, equity trading and i was into uh, pms and stuff like that into the financial world you know but uh, i um, i moved to oman and i started working with uh, with the company over there i became the head of um, a non food division and uh, exports so i was looking at uh, two categories over there and i suddenly realized that the adrenaline when i was i was getting in fmcg i never got that in in banking you know um because the the retail space is huge the 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 fun of doing something new every single day it was a it, it's it's a challenge that you want to accept and that challenge is what uh, what uh, drives me every day in in fmcg so yes uh, once you fall in love with it then you know that's it you don't want to get out of it so absolutely i yeah, totally it's agree. an endless relationship basically now. i am sure so jigar you know being a cpg retail expert uh, what advice do you have for the young brands to decide as to you know which stores should they launch the products and uh, especially in the middle east so uh, middle east you know is a very organized market mm-hmm. you know it it has it it's got it's very categorized in in sense of uh, a class uh, b class and general trade so you have a class you have a lot of set of people who are um in the uh, in that category where you have different kind of a footfall coming into uh, into the stores the b class category is the working class category which again is a different kind of a segment and general trade is obviously the you know the low end of uh, of the trade but what we've also seen is that many products that we take from india or from international brands general trade is something that we all um, expect us expect the brand to be you know because general trade like for example if you take bahrain just just if you take that country as a whole it has around 2000 general trade uh, outlets which is quite a bit for a very small country you know Sorry. so um, you categorize your brand in in that sense and you you know you choose the right retail space for the products so the product or the brand when we like when we take as consultants when we take the brand on board we always look at the kind of uh, market and the kind of consumer and then we direct them towards the right um, retailer because putting like okay let me let me give an example for example if we're talking about footwear one mm-hmm. of our brands that we carry in our uh, uh, kitty is is uh, one of a footwear brand certain footwear is for certain category like if you, you cannot you cannot sell a high end slipper at a general trade you know and you cannot um, we have a health snack for example health snack uh, would generally be in the a class and the upper b class category 
Sure. It will not go into general trade because then you will not get that kind. People in the general trade don't care what they're eating. To be really honest, in, in terms of health, so don't put the product over there. Um, it is very important to focus on 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 the country and the country's demographics. You know, um, for example, uh, Kuwait. If you take for example, Kuwait is a very um, local driven market. You know, okay. your your product has to focus on the locals. Has to focus on what uh, the local uh, demographics are mm-hmm. but if you look at for example bahrain or you look at dubai these are expat driven markets you know yeah. you know that there are and it's not only indian expats you're looking at you're looking at international expats you're looking at lebanese you're looking at turkish you're looking at uh, syrians you're looking at you're looking at a wide variety of population across the board mm-hmm. and this is the right way of approaching any market is to just study the market before you um, enter it because it shouldn't happen that um, okay it shouldn't happen that when you enter the market you end up you know uh, not positioning yourself correct on you know so uh, what happens is that when we take a brand on board or when um, any any brand is planning to get into the uh, middle east market um, everybody has this thing that oh no i have to be available in carrefour i have to be available in lulu you know these are the top two three names you know they they will say i want to be available in grand hypermarket um th- there are lots of names you know there are lots of names thrown around and saying okay i have to be available here but is your product going to run uh, properly is is it going to be cost effective is the pricing right there's a lot of lot of parameters that go into placing one particular product into on you know into the market on the shelf because we are price sensitive market yeah. global inflation has gone up so we are very price sensitive in that sense if somebody is selling something for 100 fills and you selling it for 120 fills he'll still choose 100 fills again then brand loyalty comes into the picture where he thinks okay mai pehle to i was already having this 100 for 100 fills why should i change for 20 fills extra right. you know so you will always have that particular yes you have to be different in the market and uh, grow basically this is an interesting point i have a follow up on this so you know if i can read this correctly it's not only about being at carrefour or lulu or you know any such uh, top retailers but you can also make it a success at these you know local retailers as well right if i can absolutely absolutely look for what happens is example is that we have many brands like we we cater to a lot of brands um which are uh, not available in uh, carrefour and lulu at the moment mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. it, it comes at fa- we we divide it into phases so whenever we enter the market we tend to make it into phases that okay this these are the markets is phase 1 is what we're going to um, enter then we go into phase 2 so it it doesn't have to be available initially eventually it does because they carry a larger market share but your product has to be ready your investment has to be ready um what happens is entering these large names there is a cost involved yes you know and and the cost and that ultimately adds to the product right adds to the product exactly and and you know what happens is you don't want to make it very pricey and say okay yes i will invest that kind of money into getting myself into car four and getting myself into lulu and see they they also have their own because it's not like um car four keeps you know if car four takes a certain amount for investment into the into the uh, product it's not that they're going to use that particular amount for their profits they're actually going to reinvest it by doing promotions mm-hmm. adverts they're going to boost your product <laughs> in that sense agreed but do you come in that you know uh, want to come into that first flush of funds into the market ladder or you want to enter so it I, i would always i always believe that um, getting into the big retails is is could be the second phase let's get yourself into the upper b class b class market and get yourself available everywhere so at least people are aware that the brand is now in the market absolutely i uh, really appreciate this response jigar you know this will be really useful for uh, the you know the young cpg brands who wants to enter into the middle eastern market Thank definitely you. and we and we love uh, the the younger brands you know we we have uh, one or two brands on board which are uh, smaller names you know they they are aggressive in the domestic market in india but they're not very um, uh, not available on the export side so we do an end to end work for them where you know we are actually putting them on board uh, with the distributor and then we you know we sell them forward and it is it is so exciting because it's a challenge for them also and for us also and for the distributor also because it's a new brand but the brand itself the product itself is very innovative and we want to put it in the market let people know that there's a brand so it's it's a 
it, it's lovely to work with younger brands because the aggressiveness is always there you know yeah. so, absolutely uh, coming down to my next question jigar so you know what points should the new cpg brands consider while competing with you know global brands on the international platform so international platform middle east platform global platform everything looks very rosy when uh, when we when we talk about the fmcg sector you know it's a billion dollar industry right now and um, it is a very very growing um, and a sustainable industry where you know an online business has taken off post covid um, online fmcg has also added on to the fmcg uh, platforms and you know uh, the trade and things like that but the new brands or even for the established brands for the matter of fact there are so many indian brands today in india who are so well established in india but they don't export yeah you know so even if it's for a new brand or an established brand one thing is that you need to be very aggressive in these markets in in um, in the global markets because today if you're looking at any global market for example take uh, middle east as a as a region uh, middle east has uh, n number of products coming in from n number of countries and we are talking about globally from you start from the us going all the way to australia the entire region wants to send their products down to the middle east because today uh, everything is available over there so you are competing against a 100 uh, 200 product category wise and it is a huge competition that we like so you need to be very aggressive when you enter the market your pricing needs to be very right you know study it so that you know that what you are entering into and what you are actually uh, going to be um, selling at you need to be very innovative um what happens is that uh, our understanding of the the brand building process you know mm-hmm. is not that you do the most traditional way of branding or you do like you know you people say okay okay maine i i put up a i put up a stand i put up something of that sort you know it it doesn't it it's not as simple as it um, as it can be yeah. you need to you need to be very innovative you need to catch the consumer's eye um in terms of trying to sell your product right so uh, let me give me give you an example we um carrefour earlier never used to have um a health category right so, then they started a health food category the health food category was there they had a section of it but they never redesigned it in that sense lately in the last 1 2 years they have uh, equally you know redesigned the entire um health category section mm-hmm. of their outlets and this has now been implemented across outlets uh, different different uh, brands different different okay. competitors and different different outlets so not even carrefour but even sultan center does that or almira does that everybody you name it and the outlet is actually having a health category which now uh, is finding themselves in a very different kind of a position you know mm-hmm. so you need to be very innovative in trying to bring your product out the kind of stands that you use the kind of marketing strategy that you use and we strategize in a very different way like we don't want to sell in a normal you put on the shelf and the merchandiser uh, puts it there and then that's it you you know it's done and dusted it doesn't work that that you need to be very different in the way you approach so new or established brands need to think about that i think that's that's one of the things second is the you know one of them is the brand presentation see what happens is that the brand is very good Mm. Now you take any brand today in india they they are doing very well for themselves but their partner in that region right the selection of their partner the process of selecting their partner it it breaks <clears throat> off over there that's where the mess happens you know you don't choose the right partner you you think okay somebody's approached you because they will like your product but they have not done justice to your brand so true you know and that makes it very difficult for every brand to succeed today in any region in any your brand representative or your distributor in that particular region is very um, important because he's the face of the particular brand in that particular market you know you need to understand the distributor also what kind of products he's already doing like for example you can't give somebody who's not doing give him frozen food and he doesn't even have a, a frozen food ka category ka experience only absolutely you can't you can't give somebody that kind of a brand you know we we have an entire range of um, frozen food which is about um, the entire it's, it's about chopped fruits and vegetables right so the, it's an entire frozen food category choosing the distributor makes it 
very important because he should be also available in the frozen food category. I'm not saying on the same um, line, but at least available in some sort of the frozen food category. Sure. Then he knows what he's doing. You know, so brand representative is is very important. Your your distributor is very important because people make that's the biggest mistake where our Indian brands are making because they we have a lot of merchant exporters in India also. You are also aware that there are millions like in Bombay. You have Crawford Market is one of the biggest merchant exporter hub. You take your brand over there and somebody or somebody will buy it for you. You know, and put it on a container and it's it's sent off. We. try and avoid that is because what happens is that everybody then eventually gets just a gist of the brand and then suddenly the brand disappears from the market and then you've lost your um uh, appetite you know 100% and, and we actually face that problem like today we are representing a brand who has done this business with merchant exporters and we are having a huge problem with the retailers because they said oh it had come once then we don't know so and the assumption over there is maybe it didn't work but you don't you don't you're not trying to focus on the process of exports you're only focusing on getting your product there the process is very important one and and one last thing is post covid we've all learned something that everything everything can be sold online mm -hmm. you know yes. everything and anything can be sold online today yeah. i i like when i go to the middle east um, on a on a travel tour we notice that you know everything can be sold online you know and they have really controlled their online presence i mean every outlet has their online every outlet has an app even the distributors now have realized that okay maybe we should also have um uh, a presence online so you know we like for our footwear um, in a brand we have seen that our distributors have started opening their own uh, facebook and instagram pages they're on to e-commerce websites they're registering themselves left right and center across the board to sell and and they're also being aggressive because uh, they know that online is the new you know the new trend absolutely and it you you're cutting off a lot of the matter because you you're buying it at cost and selling it at the rsp so there's a huge gap that you're covering over there and it it makes a lot of more lot more sense so yeah and you are, end yeah. of the day it is very beneficial for the consumer right because it is very beneficial It is very absolutely. convenient for the consumer. <clears throat> absolutely, I mean, today in India, uh, buying something online is 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 something that now pops up immediately. Yeah. Like you know, even if you're looking at uh, Amazon Pantry, you're looking at Big Basket, you're looking at any uh, supermarket. You know, you're always thinking, "Oh, let me just quickly Sorry. order it. Somebody will come and give it." <laughs> you know, absolutely. And, and it just makes a lot more sense because you're looking at a working category over there. Like yeah. like how India today, you have a huge working cat um, uh, working couple. Uh, population similarly in for example if you take um, let me give you an example for example if you take kuwait kuwait has started with their online presence they you know they built their online presence but it's the there, there is still a small population of working um, couples okay right whereas bahrain same thing you know it has international expats and you know it has it's an expat driven market but again has a very small population of online um, uh, of certain products which cannot be sold online or has a very small online presence okay. but you take dubai you know you take qatar these countries are have gone left right and center in uh, opening online platforms yeah you know they they you've got even the um, the logistics part of it is taken care of and even the um, uh, commercial part of it is taken care of. Mm -hmm. so and the working population now believes that okay if it's coming home why not you know it and they are ready to pay for that convenience they pay for that that convenience yeah. so if you're ready to pay for that convenience then why basically only you know if it is if you want to experience that shopping then only now you know you go to that retail store else exactly if you just look at convenience then you are just a, just an app away <laughs> you just an app away if you're looking for convenience and you know convenience is something that everybody is at the moment is looking at because uh, when you are over the weekend over the weekend now there's a multiple end of number of activities that you want to do earlier i remember when i was in the middle east also when i was in oman when i was younger also my parents used to say let's go to lulu you know let's yeah. go to carrefour it it yeah. was a day trip it was an experience yeah it was a day trip you know yeah. okay let's go to carrefour let's go to lulu and we'll you know and it was a day trip now it's like You know why spend the day over there when there's a n number of other things to do. Absolutely interesting. 
coming down to my uh, next question jigar and uh, you know this is both personal and professional so if i were to ask you your two goals maybe one personal and one professional uh, that would be great so uh, one goal which is both personal and professional i'd say i'd say i am very um, india driven okay you know so my my goal is now and i see a lot of brands and lot of potential in india with n number of brands coming up with very very innovative products you know and i feel that my one goal for the entire uh, business that i carry one goal is that i want to take india as an fmcg um, leader and as an fmcg product you know into uh the global markets where it it has made see we have huge names we have itc we have unilever we have we have n number we have tata we have we have a lot of brands here but there are there is one segment of the brand which is currently untapped you know it's that particular segment which i want to build on and i want to take uh those brands into that particular uh, category of shelves so if, if i ever go to the middle east any shelf has to be one indian brand you know that's that's my that's my goal you know and second is we want to obviously as a pr- pr- personal goal is something that i want to be is i want to be one of one we want to be one of the uh, best consultants for the region for um, for india because we expect we have a lot of expertise on board so we want to share that expertise with with the indian brands and how to enter these uh, uh, international markets you know so that is one of the goals that we yes we want to be um, uh, very not professional consultants you know we want to be the the friendly consultants okay. you can call jigar up and then you know things can get done yeah you know so it's is that kind of a is that kind of a thing that we basically so lovely wish you all the best for this and uh, thank you very much thank you uh coming down to my last question for this session jigar yeah. so you know uh you focus a lot on being creative right about the cpg brand and yeah. uh, you know you have been very vocal about this on uh, social media as well so how important is it for the brand to be creative and say what advice you know do you have for these brands who really really think about it being creative and you know how to implement it because of course people can think creative but you know taking it on ground for execution is also a, a a task so if you can throw some light on that so we we always ask um, any brand that we are with you know we if we are the consultants for them we always believe that you have to be very different and very creative in the way you represent yourself you know the traditional methods are good you know what what we were initially taught was to find a distributor you sell to distributor distributor then sells it to your uh, chain and the chain then shelves it right correct yeah. very nice i love it it's a good process but it's not something that is giving see the retail space is like it's it's like a canvas you know it's just a blank canvas you just need to start painting basically and that's what you need to do on the retail space go out there take your brand be very creative represent maybe maybe it's it's not something that you have to do uh something uh, uh, on on social media or anything else you can you can do it on the ground also like create a different kind of a stand create mm-hmm. like how how pepsi comes up with different kinds of stands you know how coke comes up with those innovative ways of uh, 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 putting their uh, bottles up you know like for example there's a brand called bundaberg I, i'm not sure if you're aware of that there's a brand called bundaberg which is a non alcoholic um, uh, beverage drink okay. right and they 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 are into this um, uh, these wooden tins hmm. of uh, branding you know so every store what they've done is the beer barrel basically the barrel right so they've represented themselves on every shelf as a barrel so they put okay. a barrel on every shelf and it just stands okay. out okay you know and 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 you have the fridge inside so the barrel is itself is a fridge you can take a cold uh, uh, drink and 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 have a you know have a drink basically okay. and they they it's so innovative because you go there an entire drinks category you see the barrel right in the center so you definitely want to think about it and definitely click your mind you know yes, we've yes. done a lot of work in terms of uh, representing the brand so we've done uh, a different kinds of uh, uh, innovative strategies on on ground you know where we are doing uh, we playing games 
you know, we, we for any sports brand or sports drink or something of that. So we're actually physically making people play on ground. Okay. And, and, the, shelf. and, and the, the, shelf. the shelf, yes, near the shelf or the near the retail space and actually making them buy uh, the product, you know, because it's a sports brand or if it's a sports drink or if it's um, energy drink also if if that's the case then yes but we have a lot of energy we have a lot of um, not the energy we have a lot of brands and um, health brand, health brands so we tend to have that kind of uh, representation in the on the on the flow like for example the fifa is coming around in qatar so we are doing a lot of activity on ground activities now these are very innovative activities you know you you uh, they, they've been done before it's not that they've not but this particular brand has never done it you know, so we we are trying to do a special kind of a game show where they can come in, they can kick the football mm-hmm. around, and if you manage to kick that many uh, goals or if that many uh, things, and you get a you get a gift, you know, and it's a brand promotion part of it, mm-hmm. and you need to be very creative because creativity is what strikes you in the head. Like for example, if you look at um, any advertisements, you know, why do certain advertisements uh, stay in your head and certain don't. It's because certain ones touch you in that in that particular level, right? They or they they trigger something in your mind. That is what you need to do with your particular brand. You need to trigger something in your mind. See, it's an expensive process because what happens is that you need to have that kind of bandwidth too, you know. But it can be done on low budgets also. It, the, everything has a high budget and a low budget. So if there is something that you want to do on a different scale all is available, but you have to be different from what your competitors are doing. Today, there are over 20 uh, brands on one shelf on health bars. Why should somebody choose yours? Why are you standing out on the shelf? Or why are you uh, being uh, the one chosen that the consumer is buying? That is where the creativity and the innovation comes in. You know, mm-hmm. So we feel that, yes, I, I personally feel being somebody from uh, like we from a creative background, you know, we, we have a digital marketing um, studio, which is up and, and the, and the whole point is to think out of the box, Yeah, you know, and FMCG will make you do that because if you are in love with the FMCG, I'm telling you, it is, it is something that you want to think about all the time is how to make sure that uh, I am better than others. I am sure. You know, so. Very yeah. nice. Great. So, you know, I really enjoyed our conversation, Jigar. Thank you so much again for these incredible responses. Thank you very much. uh, Really appreciate your time once again. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you. It was a pleasure talking to you. Same here. Same here. Thank you so much. You have a great day. Thanks a lot. Take care.